What's up, guys? This is Joe. Hey, this is Chrissy. And this is The Married Life. And it is never too early or too late to have an awesome marriage. It's true. And that's why we do this podcast. That is why we're here. To help you guys out and to help ourselves out. Because really, everything that we're learning, uh, we just share on here. That's true. We are not experts. No, we're not. Uh, But Chrissy is really excited about something we're talking about today. I am too. But you're you're really excited. I am really excited about it. I don't know if it's like because... Knowing myself more, it makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just think it's really interesting. And um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Okay. So, how are you finding yourself better or how knowing am more? I finding myself? Yeah, where'd you find yourself at? Oh, In line at Walmart? I would, no, Walmart? <laughs> Target? What are Ooh, you talking about? Target. Oh my gosh. Anyways, so um, I'm pretty sure we're like two years behind on this, but that's okay. We're just a little late to the party. But um, we are going to be talking about the Enneagram test today. And I'm sure you guys have seen it on my Instagram if you guys personally follow me. I shared a link. Hopefully, you guys were able to take it. Um, But if not, we'll put it in the show notes, right? Yep. You can go uh, take the test that way. Take the long test. There's two tests. Take the long one. Yeah, which one's long? I take the classic. It's the the first one. one. Yeah, whatever it is, whatever pops up, but take the first one. So we're going to talk about, there are, um, in the Enneagram test, there are nine different types of personalities. And so I'm just going to kind of read through them. As I read through them, you're probably going to think, ooh, Maybe That's I'm that me. One. Yeah. yeah, and we're going to describe them just a little bit. And then Joe and I are going to talk a little bit about um, our personals. And if you guys know us. Well, why don't you talk about it when you get to it? Sure. I can do that. Okay. Um, But if you guys know us, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that is totally them. So I'm just going to list them off really quickly, and then I'm going to go in, and I'm going to kind of describe them in more detail. And the reason that we start going through this is that how did we hear about it? I think, uh, well, Kerry Newhoff had it on his podcast. Yeah. And then Andy it, Stanley yeah. and then me and Ryan were talking about it. So Ryan, my brother, told me about the book that we went through, which is the Enneagram about discovering yourself. Is that what it's called? It's called The Road Back to You by James Clear. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes too. Yeah. And it's just really interesting because to better yourself and to better your marriage, you have to know yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and it helps with me knowing my spouse. And this is so cool because online, and we'll put this in the show notes, where it shows how like whatever number you are, how you respond to whatever number your spouse Houses and how you guys are strong together and where you're weak at. And so mm-hmm. it's really helpful on just, you know, being aware and just building up your marriage. James Clear is actually coming out with a second book. So the first one is The Road Back to You. But the second one, I don't know the name of it, but he's coming out and he's actually, or maybe it is out. I don't remember. Um, but it's all about relationships. It is it's out. Ha- I saw it on. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's literally um, talking about interaction. So it could be like interaction with your spouse. If you're a business owner, you could talk about or you could read up on like how to um interact with your employees it's like that's cool it's really your kids yeah. like it's cool i love how you're trying to always figure out what gwen and vivi are now like you think you yeah. know gwen but vivi i mean she is I mean, she's a conundrum she's only two anyways well, yeah so her emotions are all over the place right <laughs> like her daddy oh my gosh <laughs> So, yeah, let me run through these real quick, and uh, then I'll kind of describe them a little bit. So, uh, there's nine different types. The first one is called the reformer. Number two is a helper. Number three is an achiever. Number four is the individualist. Number five is the investigator. Number six is the loyalist. Lost count there, huh? I did. I don't know my numbers. Uh, Number seven is the enthusiast. Enthusiast? Enthusiast. There it is. And then number eight is the challenger, and number nine is the peacemaker. Um, peace. Peace. So when I took the test, it told me that I was a two, which is a helper. Right. And then we started to read the book. Right. And I was like, this We were is... listening on audio on the way to the Cubs game. And that's when we were like, this, this does not, not sound me. like I, you. It, I am a helper. You are. I, it is my wing, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, it, it just didn't describe me like I thought it should. And so I retook it. It told me I was a one. And so type one is the reformer. But better described as somebody who's principled, purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionistic. Yep. Dear Lord. (laughs) I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast last week or two weeks ago, but the way that we really knew that you are the perfectionist is in the book. He gives the illustration that you probably know you're a one if you're watching someone fill the dishwasher and you're correcting them on how to do it the right way. And the week before, Chrissy (laughs) literally told me... 
that I was filling the dishwasher wrong. And then I rearranged it. And then she, what? That is insane. <laughs> I do it all the time. You don't even know it. No, it's a waste I'm of like, my time. I, I do know because I unload it. I'm like, man, this is so well done. Look at me. What a perfectionist. Up. Stop it. No, but Okay, so really, if you put it in the right way, you could fit more stuff in. Okay. I'm saving money. I'm saving water. Stop it. But okay. anyways, so I have a little description. So one's attempt to control or repress their anger. Oh, gosh. And instinctual energy. They feel that they must stay in control of themselves, especially of their instinctual impulses and angry feelings at all times. They would like to direct these energies according to uh, the dictates of their highly developed inner critic, super ego, the source of their... Uh, strictures on themselves and others. Okay. So listen, I was listening to a podcast. We'll list a couple of them in the show notes that, because I'm really trying to dig deep into my personality. I did not realize that not everybody does not have this inner critic. That is, it's like a, it, it's like a person talking in my brain. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's is wrong. it like Simon Cowell? <laughs> yes. It has an English accent, but it's like, that was horrible. <laughs> that was a horrible accent, by the way. That was like, I don't even know if there was an accent there. There wasn't. Nice try, though. We yeah. got it, though. Or like Gordon Ramsay. Oh, gosh. Like, do you like think that when you make food? Like, and well, then I he's don't just cuss like, in my head. Is just that like, what you're asking? No. He you cusses don't? a lot. I'm just Would kidding. You stop it. But like, you picture him throwing your food, like, when it's not no. good enough. But for, uh, I'm, but that's really how my brain works. I mean, for instance, so this is why it's really important to understand your personality in in relationship. I can't talk in relationship to your marriage. So one day I came home. Okay, so every day that Joe comes home, it is like in my brain that the house needs to be picked up and in order because I feel like if it's a disaster, because if you have children, your house is a disaster. But if he comes home and it's clean and it's put together, he's going to be less stressed. And so every day he's, you know, he's meeting with people and pastoring and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, he needs to come home to a sanctuary. Like that's my goal. And so one day I came home. You had the kids for some reason. I was out for a while and um, the house was spotless when I walked in the door. You're welcome. <laughs> and... But in my brain, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, this is how my house is supposed to be mm -hmm. because I keep it that way every day. And then I don't even remember what I said, but I pointed something out that was wrong. It was probably the dishes. I don't, I don't remember. But it, like, devastated you because... Well, I don't know if I use the word devastated. But, like, it re you, like, shut down. Well, yeah. I remember. Yeah. And so, but I didn't realize it because my brain automatically sees the wrong thing in the room. And if I don't reel that in and understand that that is a part of my personality, I'm going to be critical of everything and of everyone. And I'm going to point out everything that's wrong. And nobody's going to like me. No. So. Or no one's going to clean your house for you. Well, like your husband when you're gone. Yeah. But I tell you not to clean anyways because then I go back and do it anyways. Or I You really don't the, want me to do anything? No. Well, I mean, anyways. Okay. So that's just a little snidbit of why Wives this is Wives are going to listen to this and hate you for saying that. I want you to know that. They're <laughs> no. going to be like, husbands, no, that's not true. Stop Help it. me clean. I'm just no. telling you. I'm telling you. It's just because it's my personality. But what I'm saying is that men hear one thing and then they just think, men, okay, well, that's... only if well, you're... <laughs> my wife's going to be happy if I don't help clean her. <laughs> I don't Did know why you? men who listen to the podcast sound like that, but sorry, guys. <laughs> If your wife is a one. Okay, we're done talking about you. Let's keep moving. Okay, so type two is a helper. And this is a generous, um, demonstrative, people-pleasing, and possessive person. They're always trying to help. They're always trying to serve and all that kind of stuff. Um, a number three is the achiever. And this uh, person is adaptable, excelling, driven, and image conscious. And that's you, my that's love. Right. I am a number three. Um, Describe yourself. No, I just like to get stuff done. Yeah. So I'm very much like, even today, so Chrissy was, 
uh, delivering her cake to somebody that she made and then she said they were running late and so she might be late to record the podcast and I was thinking because we have plans tonight I'm like okay so what does this look like so I put down literally the times before I text you and that's why I said you need to be here by 5 30 because I went through them like for us to be here then there then the, you know and it's just because right because I'm trying to achieve something because we already have goals and plans and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and that's why Chris even said like even on my day off I I like break down my times of what we're doing at what time and what it's going to look like but I'm like why would I want to waste my time like of course I'm going to do that you know but not everybody thinks that way because not yeah because other people are broken and (laughs) they need Jesus um I uh I love achieving things that's why like even in work like when you give me things to do and I do it I feel so like fulfilled you know um at church working at a church a lot of times we need obviously a lot of volunteers and whenever my pastor or somebody on staff's like man i need more volunteers and this or that like i love helping with that because i see an instant like gratification boom, instant gratification like mm-hmm. and i achieve something you know Check. done Ex- that's it and i i feel like a successful day when i have a list of things and there's a check next to them check 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 and that's why sometimes no offense at our church I like working at Big B where I can get crap done mm. versus in my office where I'm always around hearing, people where I'm always having people knock on my door. Okay. <laughs> That's not about being around people. It's about people that are just in and out, in and out, in and out. And I don't mean that in a bad way because I love our staff, Yeah. but it's like, but in my mind, cause I can get very rigid and I'm like, I'm going to get this stuff done because I know the vision of the church. And it's like, we just can't sit around and sing Kumbaya all day and hang out all day. Like we got crap to do. Yeah. And so I am, I'm driven. So I have to like try to go back and lean on the relationship part of it, you know, because yeah. that's something that I can struggle with intimacy, you know, and really being vulnerable and close with people. Yeah. So this description actually says threes try to deny their shame and potentially the most out of touch with their underlying feelings Yep. because you're so focused on the task at hand that you almost forget about the people around you. Yeah. I always tell people that Joe, if he's got our kids, that he will be on time, but they will be naked and hungry. But we will be on time. But you will be on time. And they I don't think they'll be hungry. I'll grab them something to eat. Um, but we're going to be on time for sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yep. Um, this is interesting, though, because like it talks about my negative and it's so true. It says when moving in uh, the direction of um, stress driven threes suddenly become disengaged and apathetic like a nine. And I was like, like an unhealthy nine, like not saying like nines are all bad. This is just showing when a nine's unhealthy and when the three's unhealthy. Yeah. Um, and it's so true because when I'm not getting a data boy, like, wow, great job. You just killed that. Wow. Look at you're growing that. Wow. Look at, you know, um, and, and, or I don't have like a list of like, Hey, this is what I need you to do. Yeah. And then once I do it, like, man, good job. Um, and if I have ideas and like, it's like they're not implemented and I, it, pretty soon it does, it just becomes like, okay, well then I'm just going to sit here and do mm-hmm. freaking nothing. And you, you know? get very passive. Very passive. Like, okay. Okay. And I said, I'll say I'll become a yes man, yep. which is not good in any organization because you don't want just a yes man because mm-hmm. then you don't have people that are thinking because then that just means like the leader could obviously be saying whatever. And you're like, yep, that sounds good. And it's the completely wrong thing right. because I'm passive. And so again, learning about yourself is helping you understand Wow, what do I do when I'm okay? So these are cool things that you know when it's good. Yeah. Well, what's it look like when I'm stressed out? When yep. things are negative? When things are bad? Yeah, we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit, but I just want to kind of quickly go through the rest of these um, numbers. So a number four is the individual individualistic, and they're expressive, they're dramatic, they're self-absorbed, and they're temperamental. Maybe that's my wing. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, a five is the investigator. Um, a type five is perceptive, innovative, secretive, and isolated. Maybe they're more like um, a an, detective, an introvert. I bet Batman was a type five. I bet so. A uh, number six is a loyalist, and they're engaging, responsible, anxious, and suspicious. Um, a seven is the enthusiast. That's a really tough word. Uh, they're spontaneous. They're versatile. They're um, very scattered. They're probably very like creative and like ding, 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 ding all over the place. Um, a number eight is the challenger. Um, they're self-confident. They're decisive. They're willful. And they're confrontational. I know some eights. And then number nine is the peacemaker. They're very receptive, reassuring, complacent, and... Um, resigned 
I don't know what that means. Okay, so I wanna break these up into three. So there's nine of them. So in each of these categories, it's called your center. It's kind of how you like make, it's like the core of who you are, like how you make decisions and how you kind of uh, move forward in your life. And so a one, a nine and an eight, they're instinctive in their center. So we kind of make decisions out of like our gut. Mm. Um, a two, three, and a four, they're very feeling centered. That makes sense. You do. You make a lot of emotional decisions. Especially when I'm hungry or tired. That is true, but I was thinking more or less when you went and bought all of that skincare product for like $500 for me. But doesn't this like certain things that have like happened in your life, you think, oh my gosh, like this is why, because I'm, I'm feeling Mm -hmm. centered. Okay. Well, even that, uh, something that I've been trying to focus on more is my EQ because knowing that I'm emotionally centered is that if my EQ is off, then I'm screwed because I'm making a horrible decision just because of my feelings. And that's really weird because now that I'm thinking about it, do you remember our conversation earlier? I said, listen, I'm going to say this out loud because I'm trying to work on my gift of discernment. I know that it's a gift and you have to exercise things like that. So I said, I'm going to say this to you because I'm working on it and I need to tell some tell someone, you know what I'm saying? And so, and then I worked on my feelings (laughs) acting like I cared. I'm just kidding. That was, (laughs) I'm just trying to be funny for the podcast. I I really did care. Okay. Anyways. Okay. And then a five, a six and a seven, they are thinking center. They're very logical. They make decisions based on knowledge and all that kind of stuff. That is not me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and we digress and we digress. And so on top of that, so these aren't just like scattered, whatever, um, the instinctive centered people. So the ones, the nines and the eights, each of these three sections have what, um, James clear calls a deadly sin. And so, like I was talking about earlier, um, a one and nine and an eight, we're very instinctual. We're very, um, gut decision making people. And, um, but he also says that each of each, Three, how do I say that? Each triad. Yeah, there it is, a triad. Okay, the one, the nine, and the eight, they're, um, they make a lot of their decisions based on anger. Ooh. It's their deadly sin, so anger. we have to be very careful. And it's so weird because I think, that's so weird, like, an eight is very confrontational, but a nine is a peacemaker. How, how do they both have a deadly sin of anger? So a nine... This is just an example. I'm not going to go through all of these. But a nine, they are the yes man. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that says an unhealthy nine. They're the ones that want to make everybody happy. They want to make sure that they're like going with the flow. They don't ruffle any feathers. There's no waves that they're making. But underneath that, they're suppressing and ignoring all of their anger. You know, but an, oh, yeah. an A is the opposite. They run off of anger too, but they're very confrontational. Like they thrive off of like combative, like it's not a bad thing for them. Where a peacemaker, they're like, I don't want to talk about anything. anything. Yep. Um, and then I think a one, it described me as like, um, I just suppress my anger. I just kind of ignore it because it doesn't give a picture of perfection. And so I just keep it kind of to the side. Mm. So, but anyways, so the one, the nine and the eight, they, um, have a deadly sin of anger. The two, the three and the four have a deadly sin of shame. Mm. Um, I feel so ashamed knowing that now. (laughs) Um, a five, a six and a seven have a deadly sin of fear. Mm. Yeah. And so I know you guys probably, if you haven't taken your test, you're going to be really confused on all of this stuff. But once you do take this, go back and listen to this podcast and then start to think through, oh yeah, why do I make these decisions? Why don't I make decisions? What is driving, Mm -hmm. you know, um, my life? What are the things, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be like this underlying, like, um, what do you call it? theme in your life and it's probably going to relate. So the wings, Joe mentioned the wings earlier. And so when you take this test, the first time I took this test, like I said, it told me, it told me that I was a two, either a two, a one or a three. And so I thought, okay, well the two came first. I'm going to think I'm a two, but I'm not. 
And then I listened to the book, yep. the James Clear book, and I was like, I am definitely a one, but I am a wing two for sure. Yeah. And so your wing, so let's say it's like, um, so let's say I'm a one. I am a one. I can either have a wing nine or a wing two. Because your personality is not like, oh, right. you're a one. You're only a That's one. Right. You don't right. have any traits of anything else. Yep. And so you're looking at your wing and it's kind of like it's kind of like your helper personality. It's like you're going to have different traits within that. And so um, when you take the test, you'll probably have like, it'll tell you... One W two. Yep. That's your wing. And so the cool thing about Joe and I is I'm a one. He's a three. Obviously the two's in the middle. Joe is a three. He could either have been a wing two or a wing four, but he was a wing two. So we're both helpers yep. in our wings. And it actually said when I looked up our relationship thing, outside of like the best relationship is like a one and a one or a three and a three. The next best one is a one and a three. Look at us. I know. Before wow. we even knew it. Before we even knew it. We did it. Um, so your wing is a two. I can totally see that because what's the four? You're not a four. No, that's like the indivi- the, yeah. individualistic. No, you're not that. No, that's like the, not that you're not cre not not that you're not creative. Okay, so a four is expressive, dramatic, self absorbed, and temperamental. But like a baby, a four is a baby. <laughs> <laughs> expressive. Okay, you keep saying stuff like that, but it's not true. It's funny. I'm just so, kidding. I'm, I know, but I just don't want fours out there to get mad. Okay. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Go, so go run through a field. Each, I just want to say this. I'm probably going to talk about it in a little bit, but each. Okay. When you say a little bit, cause we are over our time already. So then why don't we make this two podcasts and okay. we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about now next time. Okay. Cause what do you want to talk about now? Well, I wanted to talk about, there's not a lot left. I think, I think we should break into two because then we can talk about their relationships and what it looks like. And so, you know, pairing that off. Okay. And then whatever else you're trying to talk about right now. Okay. Because you say there's not a lot left, but you're very passionate about this. I know. Because I've talked for oh, like wanna, probably wanna... 60 seconds of this whole 20 minute podcast. Okay. Welcome to my life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, okay. So I just, re- I really have the wing and then I have growth and stress. Yeah. So let's talk about that next time. The wing and the growth and stress. Yeah. Okay. So this time we'll put in the show notes and then you guys can go and take the test so you know um, what it is. And then we'll talk more about the wings and growth and stress next time. Yep. Because I'm getting stressed out that we are over time. Oh my gosh. And we got stuff to do. We, see? we got to go. Do you go. see what I mean, people? Okay. Well, we can skip the concert tonight. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought. All right. So anyways, uh, I'm Joe. And I'm Chrissy. And this is The Married Life. And again, we believe that it's never too early or too late to have an awesome marriage. And that's exactly why we do this, to help you have an awesome marriage. We'll we'll see you next time. See you next time. Peace.